MGS2 is a special game. I've never actually beaten it on European Extreme, nor have I beaten it without any kills. Now it's time to put one of the greatest games I've ever played in its place. So the rules are, number one, I can't kill anyone. As long as it says zero on the final scorecard, that's fine. Number two, I can't use the tranquilizer gun unless absolutely necessary. And number three, we have to complete this on European Extreme. And without any further ado, let's go. Okay, so first things first, relatively easily, just go over to the left and then head up these steps, over the box and in the door. Now, trying to do this whole run without using a tranquilizer, there's definitely a couple of sticking points. There's one relatively close, and I've, I've had a look, and I don't think it's doable. But, we'll have a quick look when we get there, see what we can do. Now, this is relatively easy, just wait in here, and he'll walk past you. In this room, just run across, tap the wall, and go to the opposite side of the door frame. And then when this guy looks up, as you're peeking behind the wall, you can dash up. Now you don't need to go that way, turn around. Good. Okay. So here, relatively easily, just roll into the fella, and he won't be able to get up before you're already out of the room. Be wary of this next camera. Its field of view is much wider, and it will catch you a lot more than you think. So, be careful. Um, start to push up against the wall and move across as it comes up, and then you're off free. What are you... I don't need a chaff grenade, but I am a kleptomaniac and I do want it. So here, go into the room on the left. Wait in the section in the middle in between the two tables. He's going to walk down and won't look, look at you. And then, wait for when the camera moves all the way across. And just run across the bottom. And there you go. Ready? Now, Olga... I did try. I did try. She's one of two places in the whole game that I couldn't figure out how to not use a tranquilizer. The second one is less egregious, but here, that you know, I can't run up to the edge. I can't punch her. I can't climb up there. There's not really a whole heap I can do, so unfortunately, by strictly can you beat the game without a tranquilizer, this is where the run would end. But, let's see how minimal we can get it to. The strategy here is the same as you would have on basically any of the other difficulties. Duke her from left to right and then shoot her from the opposite position. It only gets a little bit different when she moves into the next phase. So here on European Extreme, you can't shoot out the tarp, so you've just got to deal with the tarp. And the same goes for the light, so you're just going to have to judge it and shoot through. She's now going to shoot the tarp off. And now, it's time for her to play with the lights. Now, you've got to do a very similar thing here. But basically, you only want to cross when she's throwing a grenade. 
and I ideally want to duke her into throwing the grenade to the right hand side. So now because she's thrown this grenade a little bit further forwards, I can just press up against the wall. The hitbox is actually surprisingly small. So she's shooting here. Now when you can just about see her, she takes two shots on on the on the lamp. So you have got you have got a bit of a window there. So again, duke it over to the right. She shoots, she throws a grenade, run across, pop her, nice, not too bad, not too bad, she will, she will hit you a few times, um, cause a few game overs, but it's, it's not too bad, definitely quite manageable, in fact I would recommend trying this challenge for anyone, just for the tanker chapter, just to get your feet wet, it's, it's quite, it's quite fun. It is quite fun. That room you have just you can just run straight from. As soon as you get down, you can just run straight through. Right here. Right run under there. Roll through the guy. Jobs are good. Same strat here, except you've just got to wait around a little bit. Just wait for him to turn around and roll through. Ah! As soon as they turn around, head down the stairs. Get as close as you can to this fella. So that when he turns around, you'll be fine. Now, you can actually just run through there. I uh, got a little bit scared, so did a roll to get out of fire. line of sight. Now there is one thing that looks difficult in this room, but you really don't need to worry about it. It's not too bad at all. Just follow this path. And then as this guy's looking directly at you, wait for him to turn, run to the post, and you can use the map to help guide you where you can stand. Now, go halfway up the steps, wait for this fella to turn around, dash up behind him, get as close as you can, and push up on the left hand side, and he'll just do that. It's fairly easy to, to do. Now this is quite tight, um, getting up here, you can see I didn't have much time left, but it's definitely doable. hold this guy up before he gets a chance to talk Freeze. on the radio and then choke him out now the way choking out works if you choke 11 times I believe it is you actually break the neck so we don't want to be doing that but this will be quite an important strat going forwards I think So the way I do it is I drop them, do it for eight, drop them, do it for eight, drop them, do it for eight, then they fall down and are knocked out. So just take out all of these receivers for the center. That's quite a tricky one to hit, but you might get it wrong a couple of times, but that's fine. And I don't know why that hit me. If anyone knows why I was seen there, Please let me know below, because I have absolutely no idea. But when you come here the second time, um, and you do continue here, you don't have to worry about that guard anyway, so we can be as loud as we want. Bridge 
checkpoint passed. Just keep running down the corridor. As soon as you see the fella in the distance, dip off to the right and hide behind the corner. And there he is. So, dip to the right. Hide behind this corner. You can actually peek out and knock over that pipe and it will play quite a funny cutscene. But we don't need to do that. We can wait for him to come forwards and then just run past him. Now, as the bopping dude here, he shuffles forwards. Wait for him, and then as soon as you pass, just keep running. You don't need to stop. Uh, this fella who's asleep stays asleep quite a while, so just keep running. And you're about to be exposed to one of the more interesting strats of the run because we can't use a tranquilizer on these guards. Now, as we can't use Tranquilizer on here, this is what we have to do. Get into this corner, and sit down, and wait. You're completely safe on this right-hand side of the wall. As long as you're at crouching level, they won't hit you. So, yeah, we just need to wait here. And eventually, they'll send someone round for us. And this was the moment where I learned that there is, in fact, a critical hit in Metal Gear 2. If you punch someone right in the crown jewels, this happens. I said, this happens. There we go. And that's our strategy for the rest. So... Move up to this box, when you see them come around the corner, look down to the right, stand up, and crit. Wait for the guy behind, throw the grenade. He'll throw a second one. And then go back. And this pattern will repeat for a couple of minutes. Okay, so it, we're going to get to a point shortly where it feels like there's a bit of a lull where no one's run out after you for a while. And what we want to do there is we, instead of staying right here at the bottom, we want to move up. You can see I just tried to move up there. So, let's go to throw a grenade. And back. So now we're going to want to try to move back upwards. The reason why we want to do this is there's going to be a guard that is sent at the same time that he throws a grenade. And the issue with that is that if you're at the bottom where you need to be to punch him in the crown jewels, you'll get exploded and you will die. See, there you go, he's come at the same time, and now we're pretty close to getting the triple guards, but just keep the pattern going for now.
One thing to note, when you do crit a guard, don't push up against the wall whilst the body's still there. You will end up getting yourself killed. And there we go, guard rush complete. Hold one plays identically here on European Extreme as it would do on any of the other difficulties really. So I would just want to take some time to say that this has been really fun and I do suggest anyone have a go at this. I'm not that good at this game, but it has been a really interesting challenge trying to do it in a slightly different way and I do highly recommend anyone else to have a bash. They are all working on deploying their own Metal Gear Force to compete with the U.S.'s nuclear strike capability. The world is about to so, if you want to do this yourself, this is the safest strap that I've found. Um, there is a little bit that's timed quite tight, just, uh, just down here. After you roll past that, this guy will walk past, and you just need to quickly dash behind him and get through. It's quite tight. Okay, now make sure that if when you're coming through that door, you run to the left and start taking some photos. Because otherwise, if you just take photos, you walk right in, the guard that's there will catch you. And then by this time, once you've got these two, he's then started to walk up and you've got plenty of space to be able to take the two remaining photos. Nations building up their own Metal Gear Force will think twice about their nuclear strategy in the light of the military dominance spelled out by... ...by Ray. Hmm. The shift in the balance of power will be... Okay, now, as Raiden, I just want to nip in here and get the thermal goggles. The will help us a little bit later on. And the will come in quite useful. Um, and grabbing them now, I know where they are, so I might as well get them now. Okay, once you've got into here, this is the strat I found that worked for me. Come down into this corner and wait for this fella to stand up, and just be mashing the choke button. Now go into this corner and wait around a bit, and slowly choke him out. We need to wait for the lift to come down. Now the pattern that you want from these two fellas to get in the lift is when they're both up, and uh, the guy at the top is looking in the middle and looks away from us as the fellow's walking down. So you'll see that now. And go! That gives us plenty of time to make a dash with the left. Now, I am going to play with the map. I'm not quite good enough at this game yet to play without, so... Let's head over to the node. Now, this first time through the AB connecting bridge is a bit of a pain. So we end up waiting here for a while, waiting for that other fella to leave his post. Please move. That would be very nice. 
Please move. Okay, right. Now let's go through to Strut B. One thing to note about here, as you're on your way past, just open the door first, revealing the C4. It will make your life a little bit easier later on. Grab the chaff grenades. The main section where you need chaff grenades is the Shell 1 connecting bridge. Makes life uh, quite a bit easier and gives you some leeway. And now we need to go and get the coolant and run around and defuse all the bombs. So I'm going to leave the C4 in here. I don't really need it because I'm going to be running past anyway. So just leave it there for now. Now, as we're on our way past, I run through, immediately cool on the C4, and just dash back down. See, this is the much easier strap for the AB connecting bridge because when they're separate, it's much easier to do that, but... I decided to go up onto the roof to get this one. It doesn't really matter which way around you do these. Follow the guard across and then he won't actually turn to his right, so you can just run straight behind him and get the C4. Now, I ignore bandages, and I probably shouldn't. Uh, you'll find out why a little later on. There is something where they are quite useful. But we'll just have to manage without. Okay, just wait for the guy to come past you. Stay at the bottom of the steps. He'll walk past. Now, I also choose to go up and get the cardboard box, um, just because it is very useful and can make a bunch of areas a lot easier.
Now here, you can run across, get on the bridge, wear the cardboard box. And then run. See? Look how much easier that is. The cardboard box was worth it. And it's going to earn its keep again in here. So, although I don't want to use it at all, I am going to run and grab the M9 just in case I do actually need it. Nothing here. Let's see, can't see any guards. Get in the cardboard box. And then you can drop down in here, immediately crouch, get the coolant out, spray it as quickly as you can, and then get back into your cardboard box. Wait for that guy to move up, and run down. Now that I've got this, I want to run behind and grab a couple of other little bits once I activate the node. Okay, once we've crawled our way through there, grab the suppressor and the mine detector. Might as well, I'm already here. Now wait for these fellas to turn away from you. And this is something that you'll see us use a little bit later. I'm trying to save my progress. So the thing that is most important is getting through a door to a load zone. There's somebody there. Now that we've got through a load zone, we can go back up from where we came. We still need to go the opposite side, and, and then that saves progress. It's most useful in strut D, because there are three bombs in strut D. And now that we've got the map and the suppressor, we can just do this. What was that sound? Hmm? Who's there? Look how much easier that is. Okay, so you do want to be throwing a chaff grenade here, even though you can avoid the first one. The second one is an absolute nuisance. Um, and also, you need to get the claymores that are on here. I believe that there are three that will get in the way. Just seeing if I can see the fellow up there. I'm kind of hoping that he's just not going to be looking at me when I cross over. can see that we've got this one here that I want to get rid of and let's go now this is a little bit of a pain first off we want to just take out all of these cameras just make our life much easier there is one over the far side as well Now, get in a box, these guys will struggle to see you over the over the conveyor belt because you're so low when you're moving. And there's two bombs here. We can wait here and it will be on the back side of one of these boxes. I'm sure there's a better way to do it than this, but this is at least safe.
Ah, there it is. Coolant. That's bomb one done. Now we just need to wait around here. Cross over. Get a map. Okay, once you're up here, uh, you can just run through the central part here, and then get straight under the wing. Wait for this fella to turn away, and off we pop. Nice. Okay, yeah, just head back, and onto strut D. Now here, just stay in the box, just keep running, keep on running, don't stop, keep going, roll through this fella, and you're in. Now this is the way I did it, as soon as I come in, turn around, go back the way you came, run round and hop over this fence, this then lets you super easily get bomb number one. And go ahead and get the node. Huh? What was that just now? Run down. Who's there? Just try to attract that one guy. And this is where some of the pain starts. This room took me about 45 minutes Nothing. to get all the way through. And this is the one strat that I came up with that worked, so wait for that guy to run past, sit on top of the second C4. Okay, now you can use the map, um, and you'll know when the people above you are all not able to see you. Um, you're relying on the geometry not being there. So open that. Coolant. Straight back in your box. And now I'm moving back over to this side because I want to save this progress. I want to save having done that bomb. So wait for this fella to walk past. Now you can see the guy at the top, at the bottom left of the minimap, can still see us. You can't, and now we go. Right, so yeah, we just need to go up the steps and back into strut D. 
Now, what my plan here is, I want to get to the opposite side of the room so that I can re-enter again and then grab that one C4 that's directly underneath me. So, pause over here and wait here for the guy to turn around. Then draw the fella on the left to yourself. Don't get too close, because he will turn around and then see you. Okay, now it's relatively easy, just a straight shot. The box actually hides you from this guy that's walking down the walkway now. And turn back around. Wait in a box about here. These two fellas will turn around and have a look at you. They won't notice the, this box that's just appeared. And then when they turn around, run right to the edge, as far as you can, hop over, and drop catch. Just mash the button. Um, also, try to pick it up on the side, because it doesn't pull, pull you into anyone's line of sight. Wait for the guy on the top to turn. Could have gone here, but this guy that's just about to walk up the walkway he can see you as he's turning. So if you walk whilst he's on the same side as you, you're fine. Man, this struck gave me so many issues. Oh, it was so stressful. Now I've been seen, so I've just got to make a dash for it. And we're going to have to do the same thing again. So now that we've got all of them, we're going to head out this door, save our progress, and then go back. Now it's time to go to strut C and get the last C4. Might as well shoot this. We've got plenty of ammo. Now this, draw them there. right to the end. Crouch and wait down here. He will actually walk past you. And then just make a break for it. And the C4 is in the exact same place that it always has been, so move on. Now it's time to go and get Sensor B. So now we need to make a quick dash all the way back to Strut A. Strut C is fairly easy, there's actually nothing going on there, there's no one in there at the minute. Here, I didn't need to drop a chaff at all. I could have just run and shot at him. That was a waste of a chaff grenade, but it's fine. We've, we've got some spare. We, we allow ourselves mistakes. Okay, and follow the exact same path that we followed earlier. 
one as soon as this guard turns. Can head through the door. Wait for this first guard to turn. And make sure you do flip over the noise making grates, otherwise he will turn around and spot you. And head straight up into strut A. I spent a little bit of time here just trying to find see if there was any ammunition or any stun grenades especially didn't see any around so let's head on now the C4 is on the west wall just need to come down here and get out your coolant and preferably not jump into the pool but that's fine we've got plenty of time there it is and now it's time for the anti-boss fight. We've got to fight Fortune. Well, I say fight. We've got to run away from Fortune in a cardboard box. So this worked relatively well for me. I've never really had any issues. If you run against the wall ever so slightly, so you point the thumbstick sort of sort of about 60 degrees, 60, 70 degrees, um, so you are running into the wall a little bit. It's fairly easy to dodge. The way I suggest to do it is, when she fires the double shot, as soon as it's finished and gone past you, that's when you turn around and run the other way. That then gives you plenty of space to do it. So turn, turn, turn. There is actually another method to doing it, where you press, press your back against one of the crates and just constantly jump out and shoot. And what that will do, that will give you the invincibility frame so she can't hit you. But this is nice and easy. Don't need to do anything special. we go that's fortune done now we need to get all the way back to strutty because fat man has left us a present now be careful here there are claymore mines as it turns up you can just walk behind it Getting a chaff ready for the next connecting bridge. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we're basically using the exact same strat that we used the last time. Now, throw the chaff grenade. I just popped on the thermal goggles to make sure I wasn't running into any claymores. Now, if we get back in the box, we can hide behind all the conveyor belts. Wait for this fella to walk down. And up we go. And it's time for the next boss battle. Now, this fight, it was quite tricky. Once you've learned how to do it, it's really not too bad, even without the tranquilizer.
Now, initially, I thought that this was going to be one of the places where I had to use the tranquilizer, unless I was going to be, you know, wheel kicking the guy to death. Uh, I just didn't think that that was feasible. But fortunately, with the help of someone on YouTube called Platonic Guy, I managed to find a video, and this is the strat that he used there. And oh my, is it beautiful! Ready? So initially, first thing off, just do as you would do normally. Just go and put out all of the C4s. So the first one here. Try to be wary of not getting shot by him here. I got hit there, but that's fine. We'd like to save as much as we can. Much health for later. Because obviously we don't have any rations. Now, he's going to head off. And... He's going to plant some bombs. Try to keep an eye on where he is by going into first person view and holding both shoulders so you can get an idea on where he is when he's not on the map. Okay, now when he gets three, he usually does four. And what you want to do, as soon as he's done four, you need to punch him. Then you need to go into first person punch him again when his arm's out. And this is what you will be doing for the next five minutes. Oh yes, the next five minutes. So now with him slowly and surely punched to death, it's time to move on to the Shell One Core. Just shoot out both those ciphers, you should be fine. We've got plenty of time to run backwards. Now we need to go and get the AK. So when you're in here, this guard here, he will near enough only look at the AK, but as soon as you're behind him, it's no issues at all. There's not really anything you can pick up. So just draw him over here. Run round. Grab the AK. And we're all good. We'll have plenty of ammo around and out, so we don't really need to pick up that much. Waiting for a gap in the guard routine here. Grab that stun grenade, very useful. Now we're back onto the connecting bridge. We can put this cipher out of its misery. And this one. And now we should be able to cross relatively easily. We've got plenty of time before the guard gets up there.
this area is basically free. Just put on the BDU, get out the AK, and it's easy. You can't be seen. Let's replenish some of those chaff grenades. Because they will come in handy for a couple of the connecting bridges. I was actually looking for another set of stun grenades there, but I was sure there were some there, but it's fine. We've got plenty. So the computer room is basically a straight shot. There's one thing that you might want to pick up on the way that will help a little bit later on. And that is, if you punch, punch, kick combo this, you knock all the books off the top and you get a full stack. Now just run in and grab the directional Hello. microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Hmm. Time for a treat. Good morning. Good morning. Now we're in the show on core, just knock on the wall, drag this guy over. And as soon as he's come past, just choke hold the poor fella. No, don't judo throw him, that's cruel. Choke him. Yes, there we go. And let's use his eyes. Okay, from my testing, Aim seem to be in the normal location, and um, the one thing to be aware of is that there are obviously a lot more guards here than normally. Normally I think there's only two or three, whereas here there's three or four, as well as a couple of extra guards up top. So just wait for a gap where it looks like no one's looking at you, and then go and point at him. Even if they do see you, they'll alert them like that, and you, you should have plenty of time to press the button. Now that we're back out, wait here, wait for this guard to walk towards you. We don't need to get in the box. As soon as he turns around, we can just go into the lift. Now double press the lift to get it to come down faster, just like it did in MGS1. Well, that's fine, because when we do continue, we haven't got a, a caution anymore, which is a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have been able to figure out how to get past with the caution, but there's not really much we can do. But if you wait just in that point there, right at the corner of his vision, you can walk past. And unfortunately, because I opened up all of these earlier, that actually gave me a much easier path through. So it is worth opening at least that very corner locker, just to make that strap viable. Okay, now just throw a chaff grenade. Just throw one, it'll be fine. We've got plenty. 
I like to leave myself as much space on here just in case I have to come back. I mean, I don't even think I have to come back, but of course I have it at this point. Now we just need to run off and grab the PSG one. Might as well grab some large weaponry whilst I'm here. It's not that I'm ever going to use it, but more weapons is gooder. Hmm. Okay, run around the outside, grab what you can whilst you're there. Shall I get the M4? Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Now going to grab the PSG-1 and all of the ammunition in here and also crawl into the vent and get the PSG-1T. That will be very useful later, unfortunately. It is a tranquilizer, but as I'm sure many of you already know, there's one specific place where I can't get away with anything else. into me. Nice. Come on, turn. Okay. Now we've got a straight shot straight back out of the strut. And again. just destroy that one. Now the next one you actually can't destroy unless you've got a silencer because he will hear you. I could have probably dashed straight across and been fine but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Hey, look, th this, th they just won't see you. As long as you hug as close as you can to that conveyor, you're fine. Wait for him to turn around and run behind him. And you've got plenty of time. And here we are, Strut D. Hello, my old friend. We meet again. And again, we're going to wait for this guard to walk towards us and then turn around. Nothing here. Hmm? Huh? What was that just now? And now we do a bit of a loop the loop. Absolutely sideswipe that fella. Now I could have carried on running, but I wasn't sure if he'd turn which way he would turn, so I thought I might as well stay here. Now this, um, just got to make sure we get them all. Now I definitely, definitely didn't spend far, far too long trying to find one of them. Nope. You'll see now how I get them all first try really quickly. There's a couple here to be wary of. Number one, you've got to mind this one under here, just under the bridge. Make sure you get both of these here. Nice and easy. And there's one just in the opposite corner there. Mm. 
there's also a super sneaky one underneath the initial platform. And then we just need to take care of the ones that we can only get by sniping realistically. The first one is directly behind the flag. Can be a little bit tricky to see, but you can see it when the flag flutters away. So I'm just getting over here to try to get the best angle to be able to see the easiest. I think that's done, but I will check it again later. You can actually shoot nearby to the seagulls to not have to kill any of them. Uh, I, can't, I don't want to use Pentasmin yet. Now for these two, I do need to use Pentasmin, so get in, follow them, and as soon as they face towards you, they're stood still. And now I'll just check behind the flag again. Oh, it is up. Is that gone for sure? And now I'll spend a long time trying to find the last one. Oh yes, it took forever. And looking back on it, it's so obvious, of course it is where it is. I'm looking at all these weird places when really, I only needed to look here. And now we're on to the next boss. Ready? Go! To the strat here, run grab the stinger as soon as you get it, shoot three rockets off at the Harrier. Then where you want to do, you want to be hanging around here just by this railing. You can use this railing to give you invincibility frames for all of these attacks that he's about to do. So as soon as you've gone there, push against, give it a better second wait, and hop over the railing. Now you can shoot at it as it's moving around and about, and as it's in between the struts. So you can shoot here, and I'll be able to shoot again. But it's not worth shooting now, as it's probably going to swoop overhead, and, it will, and the stinger will lose track, and it's not worth it. Now when it goes into the sun you can often get another one, even though sometimes when it goes into the sun it does actually end up doing a, a long range attack. Okay, when this happens, as soon as you hear the first rocket hit, that's when you jump. And those with the beep beeps, you can shoot off two rockets. And you can also just carry on being conservative and just hit it with one, you've got plenty of time. When you see it go underneath, stand here, run down to the bottom, wait a second, run back up. You've got to give it a conscious pause. Otherwise, it will catch you, and those rockets are one hit kill. This is a real shame, I can't really hit it when it's down there, but... Normally, you want it to be hovering around the middle so you can hit it with a couple of rockets at least. So now it's going to go off into the distance, stand by the railing. You've got more time than you think, there's more invincibility frames than you think. Now, when he starts doing the machine gun attack, run underneath, get in the box, and hide behind this electrical box. Use the minimap to put yourself on the opposite side of the box to where you can see the blip is. Don't use what you can see. You will end up making a mistake and getting shot. Realistically, this phase shouldn't hit you. You should be fine. Okay, 
Okay, and as soon as he's gone, head back up. See if you can plant any more rockets on face. I'll let you go out in style! What the? Damn. So because that was the blip, we could hit it twice. Okay, now because it's gone underneath, it's going to do the rockets again. So wait. Go. Small pause. Turn. Small pause. Turn. Small pause. Turn. Again, he's stuck underneath. But... This is quite a difficult boss, and this did take me quite a few tries to get right. So don't be disheartened, just keep at it and you will be fine. We've seen all, all of the different phases that he's got now, so it should just be a case of just putting it all together. There isn't much in the way of changing it up. Once you've learned his pattern, you've learned his pattern, and that's it, you should be fine. Only two rockets away. I think he's going to go underneath. He's going to do. Yep. So run down, pause, run up, pause, run down, pause, run up. It is the most difficult attack that he's got. Everything else you can deal with, but they are very difficult. And it takes some getting used to. But once you've got the pattern down, you're absolutely fine. And it'll be very rare that it actually hits you. Nice. On to Sheltered. Now I definitely got that first try. That definitely didn't take me 10 or 15 attempts. Now here, just run straight across the bridge. Keep running, keep running, keep running. We don't want to get to here. Just cancel out of that cutscene as quickly as you can. Jump over. And then when we get to this railing, we can hop over and then shimmy our way across. We need to wait for the guards. So they're going to walk up the walkway and then one of them is going to turn away and we wait. Because the other guy will turn around shortly afterwards. So you can see, and he's going to turn and then see us. As soon as this guard turns around, now we can get up and go. Got a straight shot. Now this perimeter can be a little bit tricky. You've just got to be ballsy and go with some speed. So follow this guy from window to window. And now run. Run. Don't stop. I've decided this playthrough I'm not into water sports, so we're just going to make a run for it. Now I heard a cipher here, so I'm just going to throw a chaff. I've got plenty to spare, so just to be safe. And let's go. Now 
We've got plenty of time on the chaff, so I don't particularly need to jump over here. We've got to go and find an Akita that's downstairs in the flooded area and use that to rescue the president. But I want some more chaff grenades whilst I'm here. Again, double tap, just like MGS1. Gets the elevator down faster. So the Nikita's in the same place as you would find on any of the other difficulties. And just here, to the left. No, it's not. Why are you going in there? You don't need to go there. There we go, that's better. And down here, avoid the mines. There are a couple of extra mines. And head back. We've got plenty of time to get back, so I won't even need to come up for air. There's the president there. Looks like he's asleep at the wheel. That's fine, we should be able to sneak a rocket past him. Uh, yeah. Just ignore those. Hop up on here. Can I be bothered? Uh, yeah, let's just go through. Now, initially I thought that it was a good idea to just shoot through here until I realised that there was another vent behind it so I was like, no, let's just manoeuvre around. It's not too bad. But you can actually destroy all of those grates if you really want to. And now I'm just trying to get as far to the left of him as I can. And there. What it's the fine, happened? we'll continue. He'll be right. Right, right in. So what I actually meant to do was, we walk into here, and then we take out both of these cameras. And then we shoot out this one. And once we've destroyed this, Nice, easy shot, with plenty of fuel. And now just explode nearby to wake up the president. What, what is that? Stop it! So now that's out. The president, unfortunately, has been murdered, but we've got other things to do. So back downstairs we go. Time to do some more swimming. So now we're just going to swim past where the Nikita was. And out the other side, it's all standard. Nothing out of the ordinary from a regular playthrough. Except you should go the right way and not all the way down there, you numpty. 
try to actually go the right way, unlike me. And now let's go to the right. Avoid this bomb. Left and right. Avoid the mines and open the door. Upcoming now we have Vamp. I was a little concerned initially because I thought that the only way to kill him was to shoot him in the head as he was on the platforms and all that sort of thing. But fortunately, thanks to my boy, Cozy Connoisseur, he had a fabulous strat in his no trunk run. And quite frankly, I'm going to steal it. Ready? Go! Right, Vamp is very doable. Initially, start off by shooting him. It'd have been really quite helpful if I had more stingers. Because you can actually use the stingers to kill his O2 gauge, but it's fine. Once he's underwater or about to come up, hang over the side here and wait for him to walk around. Now when he walks around, he's going to rub into the railing and hop over. Then when he slashes, you'll still have iframes. Get out an assault rifle and start punching him like this. And try to get as close as you can to him. Because when you are very close, he will do this slash attack again and you can just keep chaining this together. You can actually beat him in one combo, like this. This is quite tricky to get the rhythm of, but after sort of half an hour, I, I'd got it down and it wasn't too bad at all. So you can see I finished that one a little bit too far away, that's fine, I can just shoot into the water and hop back over and the exact same thing will happen again. Yeah. So wait for him to rub into the side and hop over. Use those invincibility frames. And Vam should be toast. Ah, That's fine. We can just wait around for a little while and then jump over the ledge. As soon as you hear him hop up, just jump back over. He will eventually come back down. If you are trying to fight him normally, and you find that he keeps doing the attack where he holds you in place by your shadow, you can actually shoot out the lamps, and that will stop him being able to do that attack. But there we go. That's Vamp. Down. I think that that strategy is probably easier than just fighting him normally really not too bad once you've got the hang of it. So now we need to go and find Emma, but before we do, there's something very important that we need. I need the body armour. This item will be very useful and basically essential for the end of the game. There's no way you're beating the end of the game without the body armour as far as I'm concerned. So now we've got Emma, we need to make our way back. And the one thing I did notice on European Extreme, her O2 gauge is so short. It's so short. Make our way back normally. You'll have to come up a couple of times for air in the second section, but aside from that, it's standard. Thank you. 
just be wary when you've got Emma on your back. It is easier to clip the mimes as she's on your back and it makes your hitbox a little bit larger. Now, I decided to be quite nice here. Because there is there is the speedrunner method where you open the elevator and then stranglehold Emma into it, but that just feels a little too cruel. Now for this section here, just walk straight down, edge to the left and then straight down again and you'll avoid both vision cones. Wait for the second guard to come past and walk behind him. Now you can just keep walking here. Just keep going, keep going. You don't need to worry about that guard that's just appeared behind you at all. We should be out well before he has a chance to walk towards us. So when that guard faces away from you, tap on the side wall and just walk up. Now walk in a straight line and try to get behind this box as easy as quickly as you can. Once you're in this corner, you actually can't be seen by either of them. And wait for them to walk away. And you're off scot-free. Honestly, I was expecting the Emma section to be far more painful. But it's not too bad as long as you can commit to just keep walking with her. It gets really quite difficult when you're trying to leave her somewhere and do a bunch of other things. Especially on European Extreme, you've only got 40 seconds if you were going to tranquilise them anyway. So you'd probably do better just not even bothering. Now, the way this guy with the binoculars works, you have got plenty of time to walk across with Emma. As is looking one way, but take out all the ciphers. And wait for him to cross, and as soon as he sweeps over the top of you, start walking with Emma. Okay, so go. Now you need to be wary of this guard that's going to walk up the stairs towards you. And the way I chose to do this, plop down a book, mm -hmm. run out of the way, you'll see that. Just duck out of the way for now. That probably was quite tight with the head whip that he does, so if you're having issues with that, just hold him up and go for a crit, and you've got plenty of time to get past it. Okay. Now, this room can be a bit of a pain, especially if you can't see where the guards are. But... If you plop a book down there and knock here, the knock will attract the guard and then he'll see the magazine. Which he'll find far more interesting than investigating something that knocked. Now hug this left hand wall with Emma. And as soon as you get towards the end, shoot in the very bottom corner. That'll draw this guard over there. Hold him up. And dick punch. Now we've got plenty of time. He's reading a lovely book. This fella's having a lovely sleep. Sound as a pound. Let's go. And on to the sniping section.
So the initial thing that you want to be doing here, um, if you go to this sort of side where I am, you will actually lie on top of the spawn for the PSU-1T. Uh, initially, we need to get the thermal goggles out and shoot all of these. It's also got the added benefit that it stacks them up and makes them easier to shoot. Not that I'm displaying that very well. I'm sure that there's a better way if I trank the guys on the bridge is about to walk over and got these later. Maybe if she was walking behind, um, it would possibly make it easier, but it's not a huge, huge issue from what I found. Oh, come on, this is so difficult to aim. Now get the PSU on T out. We don't want to be killing guards. Ah, she's been spotted. That's fine. Let's get out some Pentasmin and go to town. I actually want to get on top of there. There we go. This definitely feels more difficult than the standard mode. The enemies more aggressive, they seem to do more damage, and the, the cooldown in between her getting shot or not seems to be a bunch less as well. But it's it's not a huge challenge. We'll probably get it in two or three tries. Yeah, like I said earlier, this is the one point where, unfortunately, we've got to use the tranquilizer again. There isn't another option. It's either use the tranquilizer or kill a bunch of fools. And I think that the no kills is more important than the not using a tranquilizer in this instance. Bear in mind, when you do lie down with any of the sniper rifles, it does reduce the handshake that you get. Now we've got a nice uh, supply of bullets. Ah. Come on, Emma. Emma's on a sliver of health. We should be fine. She's got to cross behind here and then walk down the middle. And quite frankly, as soon as Snake shows up, I'm going to ask him to join this party as a just in case.
Spam tranquilizers at these fellas with reckless abandon. Doesn't really matter that it would kill them. And we don't need to abide by the laws of biology. Okay, so she should, near enough, be off scot-free at this point. There might be a couple of ciphers that will show up, but aside from that, she should be fine. So, instantly call Snake back, and it's not like he helps much. He only helps when she's crossing the last 10 metres or so. It's now time for our second meeting with Van. Right, so our second encounter with Vamp. Unfortunately, this is the second point where I have to use the tranquilizer gun. It's a bit of a shame, but as I'm sure many of you knew, there's not really a way around this without using it. All we need to do, go ahead, suck up a couple of pentasm in, hover over his head, and blast him a few times. It is worth noting that the hitbox's head is actually quite tall, so you can get away with being a little bit higher above his head than you might think. What am I running back there for? Go on. And let's just take down Van. Relatively easy. Nothing too major. Uh, right. That's fine. That's a bit of a silly. Let's just continue and carry on. Anyway, as I was saying... Yeah, just go ahead and sit on top of the PSG1 ammo spawn. Suck up a couple of pentasmin, and then just tranquilize them in the head a few times. There's nothing really to worry about here. You can just get him into a rhythm like this and it's fine. Although this spawn can be a little bit finicky, but once you're on top of that... It's fine, you don't even need to unscope or move, but there's plenty of time regardless. This section is fairly easy. There's only one guard in this strut you need to worry about, and even so, he might as well not be there. We can just grab his attention by running this way and then run to the exit. There. The chaff there is just really quite helpful for this section of the bridge because there are a couple of extra ciphers. Remember me, don't you? You've grown. High concentration of cerebral This torture implants. scene is very easy. It's not like the second scene, especially not in the original release. I'll free you in a little while. Brace yourself. 
that's a lot of damage, you know. And if you press back against the torch scene here, you get to see this. His penis covered by a tiny, tiny straw. Just wait this side for now. As soon as this Tengu turns around, make a break for it. Head up the stairs. And then just wait around this corner. As soon as the fella turns around and starts walking back, you can hide behind the box. Press up against it, and he'll just completely avoid you. Now, before you jump this gap, wait for the guy on the bridge to walk across. Otherwise, he will see you and investigate. There we go. Now we can just wait this side of the camera until he walks down the walkway and we can roll into him. And off to the next boss fight. Now there is quite an interesting strat here. Ready? First off, throw all of the stun grenades you've got. Just keep throwing them. If you've been hoarding them, you should be fine. Um, I was down to four, so I could have done with a couple more, but it's fine. Just keep throwing them, keep throwing them, keep throwing them. And then when you get to the very end, press back against the door. Hold down first person view mode. Let go of holding back against. Do punch, punch, kick. Let go. And you'll skip the whole fight. Now this fella... You can grab him, and I believe there is a strat where you slowly choke him, bring him into the corner. I don't quite know how it works, so I tried it here, but it didn't really do much. So I ended up just choking him out, and then moving on to the safer, easier backup strat. I was choking him for quite a while here. So, the second backup strat is, once he's down, go ahead, get out your sword. And then go and stand in front of the doorway, holding block. Just stand here. Snake will eventually run in, and you can stand in front of him and block, and that will guard him from attack, and he'll shoot everyone. If this happens, and you do end up getting hit, just go hide behind the wall, heal back up. Jobs are good, back to it. Come on, Snake, stop shooting at the wall. Jesus, Snake. There we go, that's better. So yeah, this is going to be your life for quite a while. But it's very easy, even on this difficulty. There's not a whole heap that could go wrong, so it's very safe. Now pause, we need to have a brief interlude in some Metal Gear trivia. Number one, did you know that this thing here means arm strength, which is how many pull-ups you've done, so you can see how close you are to getting another grip level? Did you know here that prudence means how many times you've saved across the entire game? Did you know that here, ammo's used is how many bullets you've shot across the entire game? Alert num is how many alerts you've triggered across your entire playthrough. Damage amount is how much damage you've taken. And the wonderful stats underneath are your exact X and Y position and coordinates within the level. I'm of course missing out the very important one in the middle. I'm sure there's been a few people that have been pointing at the screen and shouting at me for quite some time. Newt. 
Now that stands for neutralized, as in how many kills you've got across the entire run. Now considering this was meant to be a no kills run, this puts me in a spot of bother. I scrubbed back through the tapes and had a look, and I saw that the two kills listed here is number one here, when I accidentally negated the president 30 seconds before he died, and here when I accidentally tranquilized Emma to death 30 seconds before she died. So I've got a choice. I either carry on with the run as it is and just accept that I won't quite be able to finish one of the goals I set out for myself, or I start all over again, go back to the beginning and get back here. Yeah, you're right. There is only one choice. Roll the tapes. <laughs> Right, we're finally back. That took longer than expected. A couple of late nights. But now, this time we're back and we've got more stun grenades, so we can just spam them even more and give us more chances to try to get through this door. That time I got pulled off by one of the guards, and now we're through. I tried to go for the thing again where I pull him in. Didn't work. That's fine. I decided to just go back in instead. So now we've got Snake in. We've got full health. This doesn't really change the entire time. We just end up standing in front of here as we watch Snake enjoying all the killing. That's why. But I think you've seen enough. I don't think that we need to watch Snake get his murder hobo on. So we'll just fast forward through. Now this is basically done, we've now got to talk about the next two fights. They were probably the most difficult in the game. The Ray fight especially was really quite daunting. I'd read the horror stories about how long people took on the 20 rays and I was a little bit nervous. But after some help from a couple of useful places... <coughs> Great YouTube channel. This is the strat I came up with. So, immediately cartwheel forwards, get out the stinger, hit the middle, hit the right, and then hit the left. Middle, right, left. Okay, now after you hit him this time, as soon as you've fired, get away. He'll jump into the center, do a plasma cutter, so just spin off to the side and take him out. Now we're officially in phase 2, which is what the rest of the fight will look like. So in essence, what the strat is, when one of the rays goes into the centre, 
You hit them, they take two steps, freeze for a second in an animation, and then the target will again. So you can actually shoot just before that. I would also recommend that for the rays that jump into the center, always hit them in the knee first. Now, you will see the hardest attack that the center rays have got is the knee rockets. And it's quite tricky to dodge. The way you've got to do it is trying to dodge sort of towards them as they're crossing paths. It's difficult to explain, but it is something you will need to get a feel for. So now, go straight for the knees, put them down, dodge these rockets coming in overhead, and go straight into the knees again. Try to stun lock him as much as we can. Just popping him in the head there. So now, this guy, because I've shot him in the head, I will manage to get a chance to take him out in two. Knee rockets, sort of, as the crossing paths, that's when you need to dodge. So the best time to heal up when you have been hit by the machine guns is once you've taken out the ray in the centre, you've then got some time to sit down and get ready, because the only thing that's going to hit you are the blue bleep rockets these This boss fight ended up taking me about three hours in total across a couple of days. So it is it is difficult for sure, but it's definitely not impossible. Once you've actually got it and started to have a go at it and try to beat it, it doesn't feel as insurmountable as it looks when you're reading what you need to do online. Now one thing to mention for the knee rockets, you will get a feel for when they're coming, basically just because the ray only T-poses, so a, yeah, you can see who's about to do it there. So when they stand very still and just T-pose at you, you want to try to hit them with a knee rocket as soon as you can because it will cancel them from being able to do it. When they are doing the machine gun attack, you can sort of run laterally and backwards at like a 45 degree angle and it will basically always miss you.
when you see a ray with a name that starts with E, that's when you know you're right at the end. You're on the very last sprint, just hold it together and keep your nerve. You can get through this. Okay, now we can start to see the E-rays coming out. This should be it, right at the end. Okay, now here, you want to have a look around as you're mashing as hard as you can for Snake. He does help you out a little bit just by looking at him. I would actually recommend just use a turbo controller. I didn't here and managed to get away with this much life. The madness that you needed to hold on for a minute is just insane. Okay, now what you want to do, you want to flip away Solidus as much as you can, just block as much as you can, and try to regain that life back. You can block this and just hit him again, keep on healing, and we should be good. Now, he has got an infinite that we can use against him. So, study this timing. He hits you, you hit him twice, and then as his swords cross, you hit him again, and he'll parry, and then you block. If you flip him away like this, try to get as close to this corner as you can. Hang off, and the rockets will mostly miss you, especially if he's further up. But if he's, like, as he was there, you need to use the invincibility frames as you get up. You. 
run towards the roof. And just keep trying to loop him with that infinite wherever you can. Sometimes I will just hit him, just trying to bait him into one of the kick attacks. When he starts leaning backwards, if you do a vertical slice, it's easier to hit him. The thing that's very difficult about this fight is that A, those rockets that he fires, or instant kill, and he probably won't have much health after trying to survive the choking scene. Fortunately, most of his sword attacks, you can actually tank and you will be fine. So, this phase is actually easier than the first phase because you don't need to worry about the insta-kill rockets. So, once he does that stab, that's when you can start the combo again. I did it a little too early. Wait for the stab. This is quite tricky. When you're on fire, you need to try and do the cartwheel to put it out. Stab. Hit twice. Get him to re-parry. And now you can loop him back in again. So when you are trying to regenerate life, just hit him away and heal as much as you can. This is the point where I should be using bandages, but I haven't got any. One more combo and he should be down. One more hit. And he's down. It's done.
It's done. I got through. It took some time. It was a lot of work. But I finally managed to get through. I've always wanted to beat this game on European Extreme. Just to say that I'd done it. And that extra challenge was well worth it. So I'd like to say some thank yous. Thank you to Super Bunny Hop. Your MGS3 No Trank Run was a huge inspiration for this. Thank you to Platonic Guy. Without your Fat Man strategy, I would have had to use the Tranquilizer. Thank you to Cozy Connoisseur. Your big boss run of this challenge definitely leads the way. Thank you to the Metal Gear Speedrunners Discord. Without your help, there are a couple of sticking points that I would have really struggled with. And thank you to Rando Dusty and Archangel. Without your moral support, I wouldn't have finished this project. Last of all, thank you to you. Good night.